Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my Christian brothers and sisters across this entire world. How are you all doing today? So today's video is just going to simply be on like a little bit of the faith and particularly more on like a healing message. Um, I have the verses here. I'm just going to go and read them to you, right? Um, and I know I'm in my office. I'm at home because obviously when you first start a ministry, building your own ministry, your empire for the Lord, you know, it's not on a platform, right? You're not going to be thrown on. You're building something, and that's what you find myself right now in the early stages. But look, let me tell you, um, as a prophet of the Lord, the people that I listen to, they're prophets. I don't really listen to many pastors anymore. Um, nothing against them. I love them, you know, but there's, a, it, there's different levels, you know, there's different, and now there's pastors who operate in the prophetic, right? But as far as my life is concerned, I've already been prophesied to. I know my future. I know where I'm going. And I'm going to get there really quickly. Um, my ministry is more going to be like an evangelical prophet, right? People are going to be inviting me to go places. And whenever I go, I mean, my it's a healing ministry. Like there's, it's, it's, it's a lot, right? There's a lot of things that I'm going to be doing. Um, so I just kind of want to let you guys know that because if you're watching this, then you're particularly more like a member, right? Because we're getting into messages. And as a member, you should know what's going on in the ministry and where I'm going and all the direction and all that stuff. I do have a website. You know, the website is getting worked on. It should be up, you know, but when I say it should be up, it should be up available to donate. But, I, you know, I'm a one man person. I film, edit, um, design, like I, I literally do everything myself, everything. I have no one. I have no volunteers of nothing, but I will watch in the future. I'm going to have a giant team. I'm going to have it's an organization that I'm building, right? And an organization that's going to last for a long time. So this message, what is faith? How do you apply it? Um, particularly something, you know, that I like speaking about is, you know, healing. So we're going to get into that. Um, so I'm just going to pray really quickly for each and every single one of you. That's on the other side of the screen. So Father, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, anybody that's under the power of my voice, anybody that is with me listening, that has taken the time out of their day to just watch me hear and listen, Lord, I pray for each and every single one of them that the word may be planted in them and that the seed may sprout and that they may grow in knowledge and in wisdom of your word, Lord, that they may grow, increase, 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 because this year I have already declared and decreed that it is a year of spiritual growth, a year of spiritual levels and new dimensions. And whosoever, 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 whosoever sticks with me with this year watching me, every video that I post, they will increase as I increase, Lord. I have already declared it, and I declare and decree under the power of my voice, whoever is listening, that this grace may also be bestowed unto them. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm feeling something. I'm starting to feel the flow a little bit, so let's get right into the Word. We're going to start in the book of James, right? Chapter 2, verse 14. Because you're wondering, okay, well, what is faith? I'm just going to tell you plainly that faith is an action, okay? Faith is something that you do, right? Once you have faith in God and you already believe in God, right, that He exists, the next step is now starting to produce that faith, to use that faith to do something. And your first act of faith is after you believe is repentance, right? Repentance is an act. It's something that you do. Um, I probably should have went and gotten the Greek word for it, but I know that it's a changing of your mind because I remember reading it. I just can't think of the Greek word. So when you repent, it's not saying, oh Lord, I'm sorry. It's not saying like, Lord, please forgive me. No, 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 and doing all, it's, that's not what repentance is. Repentance is knowing that drinking is wrong. Knowing, I'm not saying like, I'm like being a drunkard, right? All that stuff, sins, masturbating, having sex, all that stuff. Repenting is changing your mind, right? And saying, this is evil, this is bad, and you do a whole 180 and you turn, you've already repented of that. It's not saying, Lord, please forgive me, please forgive me. The Lord, he says, okay, I've forgiven you. Uh, you're forgiven, and he's already forgotten about it. He's waiting on you to make the whole 180, to stop, to turn, right? So that's your first work, right? And that's what we're going to read, your first work, your first act of faith, because faith is an act. I'm going to keep saying this. Faith is an act. It's an act. It's an act. It's something that you do. It is an act. Right, and we're going to read this in the book of James right now, verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? The Greek word here is erga. It actually means a work, a task, an accomplishment, an action. 
It's something that you do. It literally means an action. So you can say, you know, uh, though a man have faith and have not action, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit, right? If you don't give him anything, if you see him destitute, and you don't give him, you say, be warmed and be filled, and yet you don't take any action to give him food and to clothe him, what is your faith? It's not faith. You don't believe in God. Because if you believed in him, you would act upon your faith, right? Because whosoever loveth me, the Bible says, and doeth my commandments is the one that loves me. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I'm going to say that that is the book um, that I think I put it here. Yep, I did. John 14, verse 15. Right? If you love me, keep my commandments. And in the same chapter, verse 21, he says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Uh-oh. Jesus himself is saying that. Jesus is himself, the Lord your God, is saying that he who loves me keeps my commandments. And he that loveth me shall be loved my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Right? So that is just what he's saying here in the book of James, chapter 216, right? What does it profit? if you have faith and yet you don't act upon it. Even so faith, if it hath not works, if it hath not action, right, I just told you, is dead being alone, right? Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works, right? So a man may say, I have faith, and another may say, well, I have works, right? Meaning action. You have faith, but I have action to back my faith. He is saying, though thou hast faith and I have works, Show me thy faith. He's saying, show me your faith without your works, without your actions, and I will show thee my faith by my actions. You see here? I will show you my faith by my... Me, to every single one of you that's watching this, it's, it's June of 2021, and you see me here now. I'm going to prove to you, I'm not just someone who teaches. I'm going to be doing. You're going to see... This is... Oh, oh my goodness. This is June 2021. And when you see me, you'll, you'll watch the first videos that I've ever posted, and you'll watch to where I'm going to be, and you're going to be like, wow, this guy was prophesying about his own life, and he actually went out and did it. I'm just telling you, right? I'm just telling you. And each and every single one of you that is watching this video can do the same, because it is written in the book of John, chapter 14, right? Um, it, it says it right there in the book of John, chapter 14. You know, very truly I tell thee, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. This is Jesus speaking. This is your master speaking, right? Very truly I tell thee, the works, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and even greater works than these. And if you go to the end of the book, the end of the book of John, right? The last chapter, it says chapter 21. At the bottom, it says that, you know, the works of Jesus... And the things that he had done, if it were, you know, if it were possible, if they could all be written down, I would suppose that the entire world cannot contain the books of the miracles, of the things which Jesus did. Now, if the whole world cannot contain the books of the miracles which Jesus did, and Jesus himself, your Lord and Savior, the guy who you believe in, saying that he that believes in me and keep my commandments and love me will do greater works than the works that I myself did, Jesus did. When you begin to believe that, like you believe 1 plus 1 equals 2, I'm just telling you, you will go far in this life. You will go so far. You will go so far. And you have to have tunnel vision. You have to have tunnel vision, right? No matter what anyone says, that's why it's better to have zero friends than to have friends. Because, uh, see, I, I, I pray that the same grace that's on upon me comes upon you. Because when I get in front of this camera, there are verses that come to me that demand to be spoken. Right, and the verse that just came to me that demanded to be spoken. Look, I'm just I, I, I prepared a script, but these words now that are coming, it's not it, they're just now demanding to be spoken. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, right? Verse 5. Watch this. Wow, perfect. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. I'm telling you, it's the Spirit of the Lord, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Right? What does that mean? That your faith should stand in in that should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God that means is your faith right the faith that we're just talking about your faith some of you Christians some of you that are watching this video your faith is in the wis wisdom of men even though you're amongst other Christians 
your your faith is still in their wisdom. So they're keeping you down because they believe one thing. They believe that teleportation is impossible. They believe that walking through walls is impossible. They don't believe in miracle money. They don't believe in nothing. They don't believe in the supernatural. Right? And, and me telling you this, if I'm telling you this and you don't believe me, you can't be my friend. I cannot have you around me because you're going to because you're going to affect me because I have a level of mentality. I already understand and read this book and I know what's possible. If I tell you right now that I can control the stock market, you probably won't believe me. But there is one prophet that already controlled the stock market. Look at Elijah. Elijah controlled the, the economy of an entire nation. It's the stock market. And you see what I'm talking I'm just speaking. I'm speaking right now. And the Spirit of the Lord is dumping verses into my spirit right now. I, I'm literally going, and, and it's 2 Kings chapter 7. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. Go to 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings. I mean, uh, 2 Samuel. Oh, no, 2 Kings. It is, it is 2 Kings. I was saying two. I was saying two Samuel because I'm looking at two two Samuel, but it's two Kings, two Kings, chapter seven, verse one. Then Elias said, "Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord: Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel." He's dictating how much of the food in the economy is going to be worth. Just what? Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. So he's telling you how much the stock market, the prices of the stock market are going to be tomorrow. Then, then a Lord, this is, see, this is why I, I, sometimes I don't like technical difficulties here. It's my, my mic, always, always trying to do something, man. Always trying to play with me. Okay. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour, fine flour, be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but, not, but thou shalt not eat thereof. So he, now he's prophesying to the man that you'll see it, but you won't eat from it. So now a, a prophet is dangerous. He has the potential to do so much. He can make you rich. He can make you poor. He can do, I'm just telling you. And, Eli, and Elijah was a dangerous man. But yet we read in the scriptures that there is no man born of a woman that was greater than John. So John was greater than Elijah. And yet Jesus himself said that whosoever is born after right uh, after the resurrection is greater he who is least in the kingdom is greater than those who came after john so even you even you who's watching this you if you could be the least in the kingdom and yet you're still greater than all these people and all these people had power 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 right and then and there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate and they said one to another why sit here we until we die if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they, say, if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Verse 6. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the no noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Verse 7. Wherefore they arose and fled into the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for them. Their life. And when these lepers came into the uttermost part of the camp, look, I'm not going to continue this, but they went and they went and they brought the, you know, the, the Israelites and they, and, you know, they took all the host of the camp, all the goods and all the, all the treasures and they brought it back and the prophecy was fulfilled. Imagine you, a prophet controlling the stock market. Now, if I tell you, this is why I can't have people around me. I myself, I was, you know, cause I trade stocks. I was doing this. I, I, you know, there's a lot of things. And Elijah also controlled the weather. So I'm just telling you. You go to the, the book of James chapter 5. You see these verses. They're just dumping. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I hope the same grace that falls upon me when verses come to me and they demand to be spoken. That same grace falls upon you. Hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. Ah, Sandrio Quanara Shinkriatues Ingrianteros. Ah, demand to be spoken. James 5, look, 
right? <sighs> Here we go. It's in James 5, I know that. Right, I knew it was James 5. Elias, uh, verse 17, Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. So he was just a man like we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. He just prayed. He prophesied and prayed. And it didn't rain for three years and six months. Verse 18, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. You see, so there are certain things as a prophet that I do that I know I can do. So having known that I can control the weather, what do you think I, I started practicing as a prophet? And I'm only 27 years old. So you, you see there are people out there who practice soccer, who practice sports. I was one of them, right? But instead of practicing things in the world, you can practice the prophetic. There was one week, there was one week in April where it was, you know, April showers bring May flowers. So it was always raining and it was so gloomy and I was tired of it. I was tired of it. I wanted to eat my lunch outside on the park benches. So I said, I was working, I was working, and I work in a, in a factory right now, so it's very, very loud. I work at FedEx, so the, the boxes are coming it's really loud. And I said, I declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus that the heavens be opened above me and that the sun may shine forth its light at 4.30 when I get there so I may have my lunch outside in the sunlight. 4.30 comes, and as I'm walking to go outside, since there's a lot of garage doors at FedEx, right, where all the trucks come in, I see the sun beaming down now. And I go outside, and I have I sit down on the park bench. You can see clouds all the way into the horizon. Clouds all the way to the eyes can see horizons. But above me, the clouds are separating. Above me, you know how clouds, when there's a wind, right, there's a tide of the wind, it takes the clouds in one direction. But above me, the clouds are separating, breaking apart. One's going north, one's going south, east, west, breaking apart, and there's a hole in heaven. And the sun, the sun is shining down, beaming, and everyone doesn't know what's going on. No one knows what I just prophesied. No one knows what I just commanded in the spirit. Everyone's leaving, leaving work, and I'm there eating my lunch in the sunlight with the, the, the hole upon me. There is no blue sky, no blue sky anywhere, nowhere you could see clouds, go but above me, a hole in heaven. I'm just telling you. Right? I'm just telling you, like this is this is the prophet. This is the if you if you're gonna become a prophet, you have to know what the prophets did. You have to be faithful. There's a certain level of practice to this. I am just telling you. It's right here, right? And Elijah controlled the stock market. And since I'm in stocks, I trade stocks, I'm telling you, I was in a stock shorting it. Um, and it was going against me. I think I was like negative 300, 400. And something bid me in the spirit, something I just said, in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree right now that you plummet. And I tell you, the stock went, and it plummet. It had about, for those who know how to trade, right, for, for those who are trading lingo, stock traders, it was like three red candlesticks of like 600,000 shares just plummet. And I sold. I just got out of my position, and I ended up going positive 100, like $100. But for, you know, because those people who trade stocks and short, right, you always have to short shares or you have to buy shorts. It's called like, you know, to reserve shorts. So I think it was like $50, $60 that you pay. It's in a fee to be able to have a certain shares to short. So I, I made, ended up making like 100 So I only really made like 50 But it was just to get out of the position because the position went against me. Right. So I controlled the stock market. You hear me saying this. But did I do anything that hasn't been done before? No! I just controlled a little stock. Elijah, he was so powerful, he controlled the, the, the stock market of an entire nation, an entire economy. Look, and, I w and I'm talking about faith. It's a good thing that this message of faith, I'm just going where the Spirit is leading me. Right, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back now. I'm gonna come back to what I have prepared because everything that I just told you now wasn't prepared. It was just the Spirit. So I'm gonna bring the message back. Um, I'm gonna bring the message back. What were you on? We're on... Healing, right? On healing and faith. So now that you know that faith is an act, that's where we were at. That's where we were at. Faith was an act. So let's continue. Let's continue. Hallelujah. Glory to God, right? If you're watching this, you received a lot today, right? Um, we were at verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead, that faith without actions is dead? 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works, by justified by actions, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? He was, right? It was through his works, through his actions, that he was justified because he had faith, right? You can't have faith and not do anything. And the scripture was fulfilled. Oh, see, verse 22, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Amen. Right? It's written right there that faith is an act. You are justified by your actions, by your faith. And this is after you believe, right? Because after you believe, it's time to increase. It's time to grow. And the only way you grow is by putting your faith into actions. And each and every single one of you is given a different measure of faith. You right now, you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Romans 8, right? If the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, then you can do anything. If your faith right now, you can go outside and begin to heal people if you wanted to. If your faith is there, you can do it. Because faith is an act, right? If you go out into the streets, which I will be doing, right? It was just part of my ministry where I will be going outside and prophesying and um, preaching and praying for the sick because that's my ministry. Um, that's faith. It takes faith to do that. It takes faith to know that I have those gifts and that when I go to pray for people that they will be healed because God is with me. It takes faith to do that. So let's go now to the book of Exodus. Right now I'm going to go on, on script because everything else before that was off script. It was the Spirit of the Lord dumping into me. So I pray and de I declare and decree right now that you receive that same grace. Exodus 15, 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, right? if thou wilt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and give ear to his commandments, remember we just said, Jesus, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, his commandments, keep them all, right? and you guard them, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now you see the word healeth thee here, right? You see that word? In the Hebrew, it's Rafa. Refa, Rafa, right? It actually means medical doctor, a medical practitioner. That's what that, so this is a mistranslation here. It says, for, if you were to retranslate it, for I am the Lord, your doctor. For I am the Lord, your medical practitioner. Israelites today, when they say they're going to the doctors, they say this word that's put here. I, I'm going to the Rafa or Rafa, right? So now God is saying, okay, I am your doctor. But yet when you get sick, what do you do? You go to doctors, to physicians, right? That's where you go. And then you get medicine and different medicines. If you have something, warts or whatever, you say apply this medicine three times a day and you do it and you listen. Because they're doctors, they wear white coats, and you respect them more than you respect God. You believe in men more than you believe in God. That's just your faith. That's just your faith. Because there's another person who has the same disease or illness or whatever, and rather than going to the doctors, they pray. Now watch. If God just said he's your doctor, he said it plainly. Go into the, if you want to, go into the Hebrew, look at this word, and it's exactly what I'm telling you. It says, for I am the Lord, your medical doctor, your medical practitioner. So if God is your doctor... What's God's medicine? What do you think God's medicine is? If God is your doctor, and you believe that like you believe 1 plus 1 equals 2, what do you think his medicine is? It's his word. Watch, I'm going to prove it to you. The book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 20. He sent his word, he sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. So if he sent his word, then that means his word is the curing agent. His word is what heals. So God just said in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse, 20, verse 26 that he's your doctor and that he sends his word, right, to heal people because that's what does the healing, his word. And when you go to the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Hmm. Okay. So God sends out his word in the book of Isaiah, right? He's just saying this. And it goes out and it doesn't come back to God void, but completes that which he sent it to do. 
right? And Psalm 107, 20 says he sent his word, right? This is just being congruency here, and he healed them. So if God is your doctor and his word is the curing agent, then you are healed by how much of the word you know and how much of the word you apply. So you should be applying the word of God three times a day. And the thing is, you can overdose with medical medicine, right? Biological medicine and all that stuff. You can overdose with that, but you can't overdose in the Word. You can create a healing vocab list of God's Word, and you can apply that agent in prayer three times, four times, five times a day. And if you believe that, like you believe one plus one equals two, if you believe God's Word because it's right here, then I'm telling you, you will increase and go into another level of faith. Because look, Psalms 138 verse 2, right? For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. For if the Lord has magnified his word, because now we're talking about his word, if he has magnified it above his name, then he has made it a law unto himself, right? So God has made his word a law unto himself. He cannot break his word because his word is good. His word is just. His word is everlasting. It's enduring. It's forever. He cannot break his word. Remember what he said, you know, the world can pass but not one jot of the word shall pass away, right? Proverbs 4.20 now, Proverbs 4.20, watch. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are what? They are life, life, life unto those that find them. And health, 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 if you believe this, I'm just telling you, you can believe it or not, that's fine. I'm just, my job here is to tell you, and health to all their flesh. So it's health to you. It's literally health and it's life to you. So when you take the word of God, because he says he sent his word and he's healed them, and God's your doctor, then why are you going to doctors? Why are you taking medicine, Tylenol, Advil, and all this stuff? It's because you believe in that stuff more than you believe in God. Watch. And I'm, and I'm actually going to go to, um, who? Oh. Galatians. God just gave me Galatians. Galatians what, Lord? Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Galatians 5, verse 20. Yep. Now the works of the flesh are now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft witchcraft. Look at this word witchcraft. Don't believe me? Go into the Greek. Go into the Greek and look at this word witchcraft. It's actually pharmakia. Pharmakia. Something like that. Pharmakia. It's where we get the word pharmacy, right? If you take the K, pharmakia, I think. Pharmakia. Pharmakia. Something like that. It's the word we get pharmacy from. And if you're Spanish, pharmacia. And it, it, you know what the word means in Greek? It actually means the administration of drugs, right? And along with spells, casting spells. So th this word witchcraft here is actually the administration and taking of drugs. And that's what you do, right? You take these drugs, you take this Tylenol Advil, and you don't even know that it's witchcraft. You're, you're, the Bible says to be sober, right? But yet you're taking this and it's changing and altering a state of what you're supposed to be. Because you believe in the medicine more than you believe in God. Now, am I saying to stop your medicine? Now, am I saying to stop going to the doctors? No. Because it all has to do with your faith, with your level of faith, right? Am I saying that doctors are evil? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you what the Word says. And I'm just telling you what it says. You can do with it what you will. Me, myself, I don't go to the doctors and I don't take medicine. I don't take none of that stuff because I know the Word. Whenever I get sick or I feel it coming, as a prophet, it doesn't even come to me because I cast it out before it even comes in, right? Pain, if pain comes, I cast the pain out before it even comes in, right? And I pray for myself and I don't stop praying until I feel the electricity running through my hands because that's how I know when the healing is coming out. When I keep praying, I have like electricity. It's like an electricity and a heat. When I put on and I heal, it's gone. I'm just telling you, those healing ministers that are watching this, they know what I'm talking about. They know what I'm talking about. Um... So, right, healing agents. Now we're going to go back on track because every time, you know, the Spirit gives me and we're going to go back on track to, to what I have prepared here, right? So, you know, attend to my words because the words were Proverbs 4.20, they are life unto those that find them and the health to all their flesh, right? So it's health unto you, right? Um, now look, right, there was somebody in the Bible who actually died because he went to physicians, 
right? Rather than um, rather than going to God, right? Now, am I saying that this is happening? So, am I saying that you shouldn't go to doctors? No, there are practical things that you can use the doctors for, for like giving birth. Like, do you know how to deliver a child? No, you don't. So you should go to someone who has knowledge. We just call these people doctors, but you know, before then, you would be handmaidens, right? These would be the ones that would deliver the children, right? So there are things like that that yes you should go to the doctors for to deliver your child because you don't have the experience you don't know how to do that right and even with teeth like getting like your teeth taken out if they're growing out that's different right that's just for comfortability that's just to get them taken out right that's a whole different thing that's something else the healing that I'm talking about here is like sickness cancers tumors uh, growth spurts bumps lumps all this stuff like things that are not natural this is what you should be going to God for, not the doctors. You know, so there's people of different faith. There is different levels of faith. There is somebody with faith who says, okay, you know what? I have cancer. I have this tumor growing inside me. I'm not going to go to the doctors. I'm not going to get surgery. I'm going to pray and I'm going to cast this out or I'm going to go to a man of God and I'm going to have God pray for me and cast it out because I believe in God and I believe in his word. That's one person. Then there's the other person who is a Christian also, and they have a tumor, they have something, cancer, whatever, and they go through leukemia, uh, not leukemia, uh, what is that thing called, you know, where they, um, you know what it's called, when people have cancer, they go through whatever that process is, right? And, and they believe, you know, they're Christians, and they believe that God can't heal them, so they go to doctors instead, right? So you have two different people, two different kinds of faith, but the thing is, God is good, God is not evil. You know, he'll meet you at your faith. If there's anything that you can take away from this, and if you're still this far, because I can see the analytics, because YouTube shows me the analytics of how many people stay and how what the average watch time is. You know, so for those people, this isn't for them because they don't want to grow. They don't want to do nothing, right? This is for you that stays and watch this whole th and watches the whole thing, right? Um, so there, there is this level of faith where that person doesn't believe that God can heal them, so they go and get the surgery. Now. Is God with them? Yes, 100%. Because God is meeting you at your faith. God meets you at your faith. It's the enemy that brings sickness. It's the enemy that brings all this stuff. It's not God who does this, right? God is good. God wants to heal you. So all these tribulations and all this stuff, it's the enemy, right? So it's not God testing you because the scripture says that God does not test anyone. And again, look at that. Look at how I'm just speaking and these verses, they come, right? Look at this. James 1.13, let no man say when he is tempted... Right, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Right, so God doesn't test. Right, the word here, I forgot what the Greek word is. Tempted, tempted. Ah, I, I, I know what it means though. It means after being, you know, like um, tried, approved to bring to bring evil right into your life to, to deliberately bring evil to prove and try you to see whether or not you're going to fall or fail that's the greek word that's being used here so god doesn't bring evil and sicknesses into your life that's the enemy right but there's two different types of people there's the one who has faith that, that believes that god can cure them and heal them because they believe in the word and there's the other one that just goes to the doctors and gets the surgery right god is with both of them but god meets you at your faith so that's where your faith ends your faith ends there there's nothing beyond that you can still increase, but the the you know, it just ends there. It ends at the doctors. That's what you believe. The sur but God was with the doctor. He was with his hands, and the surgery went well. That's just where your faith is, you know. Um, so, how how do I know this? We're going to go to two Chronicles, chapter sixteen. Two Chronicles, chapter sixteen. Right. Watch this. This guy is called. The guy was called Asa in the Bible, right? 2 Chronicles 16, verse 12. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord, but to the physicians. It's saying this, just translate it, to you the Christian. You didn't seek the Lord, you sought the physicians, the doctors. It's the same thing. Life back then is the same now. You sought the physicians. That's where your faith ends. I'm sorry to tell you. It's just the truth. God loves you still, but your faith ends there. You know? Um, 
Yet his disease he saw not the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. He died. Simple. You know? So I'm just telling you what the scripture says, right? Because if you believe, right? We're going to go to Hebrews 4 now, right? Well, I don't I need to do the Bible. I have it right here. Hebrews 4, 12, right? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper, sharper. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's word, which we read, right, in Psalms 107, he sent his word and healed them, right? And whenever God sends his word, like in the book of Isaiah 55, chapter 11, it does not come back void, but accomplishes that which it was sent to do. And in Exodus 15, God's your doctor. So he's your doctor. The word is your curing agent or your medicine that you take, you know, three, four, five, six times a day until you're healed, right? And you combine it with Hebrews 4, 12, that for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. If you believe in the Bible, you have to believe it. Like, I, I, like there's so many Christians out there that read the Bible and they don't believe what is actually being written. They think it's like some sort of fairy tale or they think it's like, uh, just imaginative. It's just poetic, you know, it's poetic writing. No, it's not poetic writing. It's literal. For the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So if it's sharper than any two-edged sword, that means it's sharper than any scalpel. Oh, I said something. It's sharper than any scalpel that the doctors can use to cut you open and to tear out that, that tumor or that ligament or that disease or whatever. I'm just telling you, if the spirit, if the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and it's able to pierce the dividing of the soul and spirit, the joints, marrow, that's any joints, ligaments, anything, blood vessels, whatever that's accumulated in your body, it is able to destroy it, right? It's able to destroy it. If you believe that, then why are you going to get surgery? Why are you going to, to get surgery to get your cure of your cancer or whatever, or your whatever right? Because it's the word, it's the levels of faith. Right, So this is what faith is, and this is how you begin to apply it in your life. Because when you go to the Word, your Word gives you hope. The Word gives you hope. It gives you faith. And then you begin to put it in application because faith is an act. It's then you believe and you say, no, you know what? I have this cancer. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to find a man of God. I believe God can cure me. And you see the testimonies of people getting cured, right, um, of tumors and all that stuff. Two levels of people, right? two levels of people. If you're the one that got surgery, I'm not saying anything against you. I'm just telling you what the word is, right? I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you, right? Um, because look at this. When you go to 1 Peter 2.24, it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Past tense, ye were healed. Healed. That means you were already healed. And when you believe that, right, the moment you get sick, you say, oh, I'm sick. That You're just letting the devil in. You don't believe that you were healed because this says that you were healed. When sickness comes into you, you have to rebuke the, de the devil and call him a liar and say, no, I am healed. I call this healing and I invite it in. And you enter into a prank for the word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. I rebuke you, devil. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. For you have magnified your, your word above your name and in everything else. And your word, when you send it out, it does not come back void and it's meant for healing. I, I, and you do this three, four times a day. You apply that to, this, to the area of sickness. And I'm telling you, it's medicine. You believe in the medicine of the world, but you don't believe in the medicine of God, which is his word. It's by your faith. It's by your faith that you are made righteous, right? It's by your faith. You believe that the medicine can cure you, but you don't believe that the medicine of God, which is His Word, can cure you. There's nothing for me to say there, right? I believe in the medicine of God, you know, because I take it every single day. You know, this is what I do. So um, that's pretty much it as far as, you know, what I was going to bring for this message because it's already long. I don't want to get any further than what I am uh, have already said, right? So this is in everything, right? And when you begin to be able to cast out pains and sicknesses within yourself and you begin to be able to pray and to call upon the promises of God, then that's how you begin to lay your hands on people because you have already overcome sickness in the Lord, right? You have God inside you. The same spirit of God that's uh, raised Jesus from the dead is inside you and you begin to bring him out like Superman. You know how like Superman has the S inside of himself, but on the outside he wears his suit and whatever and stuff. 
It's the same thing. Now, when you break through the flesh, the J for Jesus becomes to come out. And this is just, you know, the analogy. And when you start to do that, you put Jesus on and now you have Jesus and you begin to do all these things, right? You begin to work in the works that Jesus did. All right. So I'm not going to go any further than that. I think that's pretty good for, you know, a Sunday message. Um, so I'm just going to quickly pray. I do have a website. It's I'm building it right now. So when you get on there, it's obviously not fully functional. But the tabs should work, so you can go and donate and give your, your tithes and your offering um, or what it is that you want to give, right? So there should be three, seating, tithing, and offering. Um, each one has a different purpose within, you know, the ministry and within the spiritual realms. You know, there are people who are mature that understand what a seed is, what a tithe is, and what an offering is. All right, so go ahead and give your tithes, your offerings, or your seating now. Um, and I'm going to quickly go ahead and pray for that offering and pray for each and every single one of you. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, anyone that is under the power of my voice, I pray for their offering, Lord, that they may be increased. I pray that you may pour out for them a blessing as written in the book of Malachi chapter 3, Lord, that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out for them a blessing, and that you rebuke the devourer for their sakes. For this is our covenant with you, O Lord, and that the seeding that they seed may be fruitful and prosperous unto them, that the word that I have dropped in their spirit may be seeded and may be fruitful and watered and be a nice and beautiful plant in them, that it may be a table prepared for them in their hearts, that these words not do not drop to the ground. Because I have already declared and decreed that this year is a year of spiritual growth and spiritual levels. So each and every single person that followeth me for this year shall grow, shall increase in their knowledge and in their wisdom and in their understanding of the word, O Lord. And those who participate as a participator and partner with me in my ministry shall see great things and they shall receive the benefits of increase. So I pray for them and their offerings, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right, so... That's it for today. I'll see each and every single one of you guys next week. God bless.